So if you're new to this channel, go down below, hit that subscribe button, give us a big thumbs up on this video. Uh, we're gonna be talking about um, when to feed your hives um, and when to stop, so. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Jose, the California beekeeper. Today I wanted to share with you a couple things. Uh, we've had a lot of questions on uh, when do we know? Ooh. All right. So, um, when do we know not to feed our bees anymore? When can we stop? So there's a couple things that you should know. We're gonna drop it here in a little bit. But if you're new to this channel, hey, welcome. Uh, thanks. Um, stinking bees. I'm trying to make a YouTube video over here. So, hey, if you're new to this channel, welcome. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, go down below, hit that sub. What the heck? <laughs> See? I'm not trying to kill you, B. Oh man. You know when you got that one bee, you know it just wants to sting you. Just, <laughs> just get it over with, sting me. Okay, we had to just, just get off that hive and let's go, let's go do this, okay? So we're here at the yard and I'll just show you a couple things. We here in Northern California, we are on I mean, it is a little dry right now. We have weeds that are coming up. Some star thistle is what's in our area. Star thistle will come next. And we have this blue curl that comes around uh, late July, August. One so. thing that I do recommend is getting familiar with your area where you have your bees at. Um, look for, wow, there's a bee. It's just still the same one. So you need to look for um, the weeds around here show you something real quick around here what we have is some star thistle we're in northern California this is getting ready to pop here in a couple maybe a week or two so there's an abundance of star thistle everywhere so that's one thing I know that they're gonna be hitting some nectar flows they still need feed right now and it all depends on what you're working with I have here a bunch of singles um, that I'm working with and these were splits or some nooks that I made. I pulled frames them and uh, just building them out. So we have a couple doubles. Well, and this is what star thistle is. You have all these flowers here. They're pretty thorny. They're not my favorite plant, but they're great for the bees. And there's a good amount of it. You can see it. All this light green looking stuff. It's just popping up. And that will be blooming here soon. So, star thistle has a good amount of nectar flow. Uh, they, the bees love it. There is no pollen though. We have to be careful with the pollen as well. Um, you have a lot of nectar coming in, but you have to keep in mind that with the nectar that's coming in, pay attention to your hive because you likely will have to supplement with them with some uh, some pollen sub and uh, that's good for the bee and the, for the colonies in order for them to have a good balance and you don't want them to get honey bound when I when honey bound happens that just means that there's so much nectar coming in they're filling every piece of comb that they can find and then the queen has nowhere to lay so that's one thing that you need to pay attention to as far as the flow coming in and how much is coming in. Because then that determines whether or not you have to stack another super 
if it's stacking a super to just give them room or if it's a honey super whatever it is you just have to pay attention to make sure that you give them enough room so that you can avoid the colony from becoming honey bound as far as our area we know that we don't have any nectar flow going in into the hive yet um, but we will show you some hives that we have cranked the feed and have built out and are pretty much waiting for that next nectar flow if you want to make some honey it's pretty important to crank the feed on your bees to make them as explosive um, in population as possible the more bees the more worker bees so more worker bees out in the field well means more honey and that's why we like to crank the feed uh, when there's nothing coming in just to build these hives out um, some of these singles here that we're working with um, are still built getting built out the flow that hits them will be just enough to fill up that second box that we're gonna stack here soon um, but on singles we just like to crank the feed um, we never take from the singles we only take from the doubles if we want to extract um, honey and for those those ones will get a honey super that we'll stack here once we start seeing a little shakeout when I say shake out, shake out is when you pull out a frame and it seems to be dripping. Um, sometimes you will have 100 degree days where it's just the, that nectar that they already had brought in. It could be syrup that just drizzles down. But when you know that they're on a flow, the bees are calm. The bees are calm, stay calm when you're digging into the hive. Um, and when you're digging to, into the hive and you see that they're very calm, Pull out a frame. Uh, I usually like to pull one of those outer frames um, in order to identify if they're on the flow. Um, it's hard to shake out one of those that have brood or larva because what you're shaking out is pretty much um, the food that the bees, the nurse bees, have are trying to feed the um, excuse me are trying to feed the larva. So I tend not to shake those frames. So shake out is nectar that they've brought in they're trying to store you'll shake the frame and you will see nectar fall down and the nectar will be very watery like it's not um, you'll know the difference between syrup and the nectar and hopefully we can maybe find something here there is still some stuff that's blooming um, there's some some leftover blackberries and most of the area the blackberries are done but down here in the river in the creek bottom there is some still wild uh, wild blackberries that are blooming and uh, hopefully maybe they're bringing in some nectar that we can show you guys all right all right guys so the first thing I do when to know if I'm gonna feed my hive or not is what I do is hefting and hefting is you pretty much checking the weight of your beehive and how I like to heft is I'll grab the bottom box and I will tilt it just like so. Then I'll just take a look down below and uh, I need to replace this pallet or just tack these back in. But you can kind of tell it's well populated and I will say that that is about uh, maybe about 120 pounds. That's just a rough number. Uh, I mean, my hands are done this for quite a while. So yeah, I would say this one would not need feed, but I would keep in mind that it does have a lot of bees and they do eat um, a lot once it's populated um, just like that, you know, and I'll take a look at the top lid and so crack open this top lid and I'll take a look at the top and look down below or based on what I saw down below at the bottom of the hive bees all the way across for the most part there's bees all the way across here too and I will pull out a frame to kind of see what's going on and determine if I'm gonna feed it more or not.
once I know that the bottom, once I hefted it, has a good amount of bees, has good, good weight, and again, the weight is around 100 plus pounds, we'll take a look upstairs. Um, we'll have to keep in mind how much brood we have going on, larva, um, that will also make my uh, decision on if I should feed it or should I just wait. So I'll go in here to the outer frames. Pull it out. And I'll just take a look at what they have already stored. There's no eggs here. Actually, I'm wrong. There's a few eggs down here at the bottom. But this is an outer frame full of honey. Solid capped honey there. This is syrup that we had already fed them. So when I say honey, I just mean syrup. Here's another solid. So for the most part, they have a lot of resources left. Um, and I won't feed it. I will say this one, here's another good solid brick of capped uh, resources for them. So it looks like this whole top box just might be all honey. And now I'm getting into the eggs. So that's the one thing I will pay attention to. How many eggs have they laid out? What's going to be hatching? Awesome. So yeah, I'll just leave it like so. As far as the weight, feels good and we won't feed it. But I will dig into them to see what's going on. I never try to, I always try to be careful when I'm putting them back in. I don't like to squish bees. And I like to put my frames back in position so they don't draw any burk home. And that is what you should look for when trying to identify if you should feed your bees or not, is checking the weight, hefting them, digging into your outer frames in that top honey super, checking how much food they have, uh, resources, check their pollen, check their honey, and that should be something that you should uh, be, able, be able to identify just by looking inside your hive. Um, other signs, and it's getting hot. So, other signs of um, knowing when not to feed is that if you put feed in your feeder, I don't think I had an inside feeder here, but if you put feed inside your inside feeder and it's still there and the bees aren't touching it, that's another sign that they are on a flow, some kind of nectar flow, and aren't needing to drink all that feed that you put in their feeder. If you do um, top feeders with cans, that will just be another thing that you can just kind of pay attention to. What they'll do is they'll put propolis on the little little holes that you have for your top feeders. Um, if they plug those up, that's another sign that they just don't want the feed yet. Um, so pay attention to your to your little caps, and if they plugged them up, there might you know sometimes they do just plug them up for for no reason. So yeah, pay attention to that. So. Going back, if you feed inside feeders and they have not touched it, they're on a flow. 
and you can just leave the feed there and they'll use it when they want. Uh, top can, make sure they haven't plugged it up. That's another sign that they don't need the feed if they plug it up. And so as a general rule, at any time in an active season, a colony should have a minimum of 10 pounds of food stored, roughly equivalent to two full frames of food. In the autumn season, it needs winter stores of about 30 to 60 pounds, between six to eight full frames. And in the winter, storing is for winter survival, but also at the mainly provide food for the colony development in the spring. And white frost. And when I say white frost, that means that in the top of the hive here, you'll see new comb that they start to draw out. That means they're just, they're on, they're stimulated. They need to make more room if it's more comb, um, whatever it is. And if we can come across one there, we, we're, we are not in a flow here, but if we can come across something that looks like frost, either ooh, from feed or whatever it is. Um, we'll try to show you that. Here, this is from our, from a, um, from syrup being fed to them. Just so I can show you guys what, fr what the frost looks like. And let's see if you can see. So right there in the edge, looks like new comb. If you look at it in an angle, let's see if we can find a better one. So if you look at this in an angle, you'll be able to tell this is all white, new, new wax that they have drawn out. They didn't draw it out because of the, um, of the, there being a flow see if you hold it in an angle you can see that's all new comb right there all that is new comb and you'll you'll be able to see that when they're on a flow you'll see a lot of it right there on the top bars so anyhow that's what you can look for is some white frost on your uh, frames once you see that you know that they're working something. They're working the comb, they're building more wax. And the reason they're working it is because, like I said, there is flow coming in. It could be from you feeding them or a flow. Pretty much they're drawing it out for a reason. So if they don't have a flow and they don't have pollen, they're not gonna draw out new wax. So that's another way of identifying if you need you can see all this is new and it is syrup that I gave them but it's all new and like I said I'll crank the feed when they're singles I will crank the feed as much as possible in order whoa 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 Holy cow! So, here's another tip. Okay. Never panic. Okay. <laughs> Never panic. Just gather your thoughts and walk away fast. Stop what you're doing. Don't drop your frame. Don't throw your frame. You're just going to get more bees upset. So, we're gonna have to drop a video on that soon. Anyhow, get that veil on as quick as possible. I would rather have one bee trapped in here and get stung one time than I've seen it plenty of times, newbies, and I used to do commercial beekeeping, um, working for a larger outfit. And we always had a newbie that for some reason, they like to swat these bees swat the bees never put on their veil but once they put on their veil and they have that one bee in there the veil comes off I've never understood that but it happens and I don't mean to laugh if you've done that because I've done that too uh, 
I've been a newbie and that's happened to me plenty of times. I've even had the trick played on me on running in a zigzag motion. Just put your veil on and you'll be fine. <laughs> so, like I was saying, when they're singles, we will crank the feed and we crank it just so we can see her lay. Lay and lay and lay. And she'll lay for you. As long as there's food being brought into her, if it's syrup, nectar from weeds, whatever it is, you know, we're just trying to keep healthy bees. So. Give them what they want. They'll give you what you need. Let's put this girl back. Things back like so. Put my lid. This is a hive here that uh, I just didn't have time to do anything with, but it was explosive. She needed a room. So I went ahead and I stacked a super right up top and just doing so I could come back push the bees down with some smoke or even possibly do th split it three times um, there's so many things that you could do with something like that but that is stacking a super on top of a an explosive hive that needed room for her to lay so and that's what we do when we just don't have that time we just have to go 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 and if you're a commercial beekeeper or a sideline beekeeper so you know that the bees aren't going to wait for you <laughs> so. if you do struggle with getting yourself a bee yard that has resources for your bees um, just ask around keep asking be persistent and you'll find something you'll find a yard that works for you works for your bees end of the day it's what's best for the bees and we try to find yards that have resources pollen and nectar is the main things and obviously we do like to stay where there's a lot of trees um, I don't like to stay underneath the trees but I like to stay for the most part near them or around them and it's just because we don't like the Sun beating on our hives all day we get a hundred plus degrees out here and all right guys so real quick I'm gonna show you um, this is not shake out from nectar being brought in it's just uh, I want to be able to show you guys what shake out looks like um, so I'm gonna show you off of a brood frame that uh, you know I normally don't like to do that but I wanted to show you guys and share what what it would look like if you guys were on a on a flow in your area and this is another sign that you can look for to determine if you need to feed your bees or not so i'll just i'll just take a quick glance make sure the queen's not on here shake a couple bees off and this is what the flow would look like so I'll grab the frame from ear to ear, just like so, and I will shake it. And that's what nectar should look like when it's flowing. And again, I will go from the outer frames. I'll never really shake the ones with the brood, because again, well, like I said, it is, that's, the food that the bees are nursing the larva so if that were an exterior frame from the outer edges and you shook it saw a good amount of shake out then uh, that's another way of determining if your bees need feed or not so important check the weight check for the population check for the shakeout and then that should make it a lot easier to determine the feeding of your bees hopefully that helped if you haven't already subscribed to this channel go down below hit that subscribe button 
give us a big thumbs up. If you're new to this channel, welcome and thank you so much for the support, guys. Um, follow us on Facebook and Instagram at the California Beekeeper.